co-owner of LaRue Body Arts and LaRue Body Arts Seminole Heights. Uh, this is our second location. We've been here for about two years now and our other location's been open about five now. At this location, we have two artists. It's just me and my apprentice. Mm -hmm. And that would be Irma? Yeah. And you guys do piercing in both locations as well? Yeah, yeah, we do a, like curated and high-end piercing. Um, I've tattooed for about 11 years now. I started in 2012, like right out of high school. Um, I moved to Tampa about seven years ago, and I'm from Florida, but like I really found my foot here, just with like the, the different subcultures, and it like was really influential to my work. And did you go through the like a typical apprenticeship when you started tattooing? Yeah, it was about like a year of just like you know mopping the floors and doing it was I feel like it was definitely like more of a traditional apprenticeship yeah <laughs> do you feel like you maintain your your art style from before you started tattooing until after you transitioned into tattooing or did you have to adapt it to work more with tattooing oh it was definitely I feel like it, I definitely had to adapt like line work and ironically that's mostly what I do now I was just like a painter and everything was very loose and now I just do like a lot of hard lines. It's a, uh, it's been, it, styles change like constantly, but over the past like like seven or eight years, I feel like I've really found a style that I like. And like tattooers can like have a lot of influence on you. Sometimes it's too much influence. And I took a long time to like figure out what kind of tattoos I wanted to make because I, I feel like there wasn't a whole lot of that kind of stylized work, or at least my, who taught me, I didn't have that same kind of influence from other artists. So I feel like finding like my individual style was probably the hardest part. One way or the other, uh, either people did great or they were really impacted during uh, the pandemic. How did, uh, how did the shop hold up during that? Uh, it was a spicy time. There was a lot of like unsureness as to what was going to happen because we were still a fairly new shop. But um, we stuck it through. Um, there were a lot of hard months, but we've—I I find that it, it was more successful even then because we put so much work into it during those times. You guys have a very seems like dark, <laughs> dark style. Uh, how would you describe it? Um, I feel like this shop in particular just has an overall like eccentric, like macabre, noir, weirdo style and everybody in here kind of like adds to that influence. Um, my style is very uh, like medieval etching woodcut influenced by like Dorr and uh, Gustav, like Albrecht Dorr and Gustavo, yeah. So there's just like a lot of heavy black, uh, lots of like small etching line work, a lot of like very high con contrast in values, um, where Irma's is like very, like colorful, but it's still very like that, like classic Halloween and very like bold. I've heard Irma refer to hers as a uh, bubblegum goth. Bubblegum goth, yeah. <laughs> She's like the, the counterpart to my very like dark, morbid, horror, very graphic style. And it's cool with uh, it reflects in just the layout of your all shop. Like, uh, it's very, like, it feels like. It feels like the castle, you know, like the e <laughs> castle. The know. castle definitely has some influence, which is, you know, our, our logo is like the Florida Lee, so it's very like New Orleans inspired, uh, the just architecturally inspired by like castles and um, it's, it's not as spacious as we thought it was because we originally had three stations in this room and when it's full of tattooers and clients, it gets really packed. But um, yeah, I really like the, the, there's a flow to this shop that the lanterns kind of guide you through. So it's, yeah, it's pretty eccentric for a tattoo shop, but we like it. <laughs> yeah, uh, a big one is Squire, because his, st his style, you know, it's just like top tier illustration, like tattoo work is like modern master, I would say. I'm a big fan. Um, yeah, so oh, where Squire's cheesing, he can feel yeah, it. Yeah, no, <laughs> the other ring. 
Um, I would say, like, definitely, like, when I started tattooing in 2012, like, Derek Noble and, like, the neo-traditional tattoo was really big, so I feel like a lot of my work comes from that influence. Um, it's kind of what got me into tattooing, because there was just, like, a lot of traditional and, like, 90s bubbly flash, but, like, this new era of, like, uh, like the Buena Vista style and the expressionism and tattooing and, the, like, the very graphic and organicness was, like, totally new to tattooing. I remember it being that way and it was just like oh my god you can do all these things with like tattooing now. Yeah, yeah. What, what piece are you working on today? Uh, we're doing a, a chest piece I've done his neck and we're adding on like a three-quarter torso piece of just like black Lovecraftian monsters and gothic cathedrals just it's gonna be a nightmare to do but I'm so excited. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We are a private tattoo shop, basically, so both of us book through like our Instagrams and our booking websites. We don't get a, we don't really do a whole lot of walk-in traffic, um, just because like people follow us for our very specific style. So I feel like we we just have to like reach out and find that like crowd that like you know works with us on their their the our clients just seem to like really vibe with just like whatever we're doing and they give us a lot of like uh, free range and stuff on design I find a lot which is really cool. Uh, yeah my books are closed for 2022 <laughs> yeah it's crazy. That's a good problem to have man. Yeah yeah overwhelming but super exciting yeah.